India today is the largest user of groundwater in the world, with almost 90% of rural India using groundwater for their drinking water needs, and almost 60 to 70% of irrigation in India being sourced from groundwater. There are two large pockets of groundwater exploitation in India, one in the northwest and the other in the southeast. Essentially, the northwest one is about Punjab, Haryana, part of Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, parts of Gujarat. And the southern nucleus of groundwater exploitation is largely in and around northern Andhra Pradesh, maybe the Godavari Delta, part of Tamil Nadu, part of Karnataka. As a matter of fact, latest figures also point to the fact that nearly 50% of urban water supply is groundwater, informally or formally. Such a large and varied groundwater use in India has led to a groundwater crisis. A groundwater crisis that is embedded both in the different levels of groundwater exploitation of aquifers in different parts of India, and on the other hand, issues of groundwater contamination that find uh, their, their origins both in geogenic sources of contamination like arsenic and fluoride along with anthropogenic sources of contamination primarily on account of poor disposal of waste and wastewater. So sanitation for example in rural India, but also industrial and urban sewage on the other hand. So effectively India is a conundrum of groundwater, huge groundwater dependence coupled with large scale groundwater exploitation and extreme contamination in some parts of India. So India is essentially on the threshold of a very serious groundwater crisis which needs mitigation both in the field as well as in the policy corridors of the country. The common perception in looking at groundwater, whether it's the common man or whether it's government programs, is to look at sources of groundwater, look at wells, bore wells, tube wells and springs. Now all of these are sources of groundwater and have uh, and are only a part of looking at the resource which is the aquifer so all these years the focus has been on sources increasing sources constructing sources rather than looking at the resource which is groundwater in an aquifer and only a shift in focus from a source based approach to a resource based to a resource based based approach is going to bring about a change in how the government or how the common man perceives groundwater. Understanding aquifers is not easy, but understanding aquifers has almost become a mandate in the pursuit of groundwater management in India. A source-based approach just looks at a source, like a, like a well for instance, where one is looking at the diameter, the depth, the nature of pipes that go into a, a bore well, or the nature of construction of a, of, a, of, a, of a dug well. On the other hand, an aquifer based approach is about where do you put a well, where do you put a recharge structure, where do you put a water harvesting structure, how much of water does an aquifer retain or store over the course of a year, how does the aquifer storage change and many, many such other factors. What are the quality issues in an aquifer? How does quality vary in space? How does it change over time? And all of these elements. The mitigation of groundwater crisis in India requires a two-fold approach. One, is require, it requires a very large scale community participation. Because most users of groundwater are private users, individual landowners, and millions of farmers spread across different parts of the country. So any measure that relates to groundwater management, whether on the supply side, that is in terms of improved recharge, or whether on the demand side in terms of self-regulation by communities, both of these involve 
a huge amount of participation. Uh, the second element is what the government can do, which can be put in what is called, put under the bracket called groundwater governance. And groundwater governance is about smart regulation, smart legislation, and coming up with mechanisms of formal, informal legislation that will ensure protecting and promoting a community-based participatory approach to managing groundwater in our aquifers. Which also brings us to the very important element of understanding groundwater through aquifers. Because understanding groundwater through aquifers is the only mechanism which will lead us to understanding and accepting groundwater as a common pool resource. The government as well as communities are approaching groundwater management with a very on, a, on a very positive note. For instance, the government, the government of India now has a program called the Aquifer Mapping Program, which aims to map and understand aquifers in a bid to come up with various groundwater management solutions, particularly in the domain of participatory groundwater management. Having said that, there are other initiatives that states are taking. For instance, the state of Maharashtra has come up with a new, with a very, very well reformed act for groundwater legislation. The state of Andhra Pradesh is re-looking at its legislation, which was the AP Volta Act, and trying to bring in a focus on protecting and promoting participatory, community-based groundwater management through a regulatory framework. Most other states have groundwater recharge as an essential component of various programs, both state and central. Having said that, it's also important to understand that unless communities or villages or townships become a part and parcel of these programs, these programs are not going to be working fully. I mean, most of these programs will end up being supply-side mechanisms or licensing mechanisms in the case of groundwater legislation rather than a comprehensive groundwater management program. And on the other hand, there are communities, there are success stories from all over India which are promising, which kind of, which, which hold promise in terms of regulating groundwater at a village level, irrespective of whether there's a formal groundwater regulation or not. A lot of these programs, and it's, it's difficult to cite one or two, there are many of these, there are few. There are examples from Andhra Pradesh, from Maharashtra, from Gujarat, from Rajasthan, from all over the country. And somehow, the essence of groundwater management is how does one combine these so-called promising pilots or pilot experiences with the regulatory framework, with the large-scale aquifer mapping program that the government has set out to do. And I think that combination, that collaboration those kinds of partnerships hold the key in the success of groundwater management in India.